Hi everybody. In today's lecture I'd like to talk to you about convection and especially what's going on with convection at the nanoscale. So let's review convection. First of all, convection Remember, we've been talking about heat transfer and the three methods of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. And convection is heat energy that's transferred by movement of a medium or substance, like a fluid. So this is the kind that you're used to if you have a heat pump in your house. You have hot air that's then circulated through your home by a fan, right? That's forced convection. Another type of... Uh, thing that you might have in your home is a radiator and so in the radiator you have something hot against your wall that hot thing heats up the air around it the hot air rises because it's less dense and then you have the circulation of warmer air through your room by what's called natural convection okay so that's a little cartoon here of the radiator, basically the radiator warming the air above it, rising up, and then of course as it gets further away from the radiator it cools off and then it falls back and then you get circulation of air, a continuous current of air in your home. Alright, so that's convection and usually with you know your 1000 level physics courses everybody goes, yeah, convection, transfer of heat by a medium, and they stop there. And that's because in the 1000 level physics courses, that's all you can handle. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about fluid dynamics. This isn't a fluid dynamics lecture. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Um, but fluid dynamics is really tricky stuff. So the thing that governs the, or the equation that we use to discuss uh, convection is often um, given here, Newton's law of cooling, okay? And it looks really simple, right? So here, this dQ dt is the rate of heat transfer. Remember, we use Q for heat. And then this is the time derivative of the heat energy transfer, dQ dt. And then that's equal, equal to the heat transfer coefficient, h sub t, times the cross-sectional area through which the uh, heat is being transferred, a, times the temperature gradient, delta t, or t1 minus t2. So this looks like a pretty straightforward, easy to handle equation, doesn't it? Right? <laughs> oh well. The problem is that h sub t isn't just some cool number that you can pull out of a table somewhere. It's not really that simple. It's not a material property. h sub t changes all the time <laughs> with everything. It changes with the properties of the fluid flow whether it's turbulent or whether it's a laminar flu fluid flow. Laminar is shown here on the left, nice straight fluid flow, turbulent, lots of eddies and things going on there on the right, right? So the properties of the fluid flow affect H sub T. The properties of the fluid itself, how viscous it is, how, viscous it is, how dense it is. The geometry of the solid-liquid interface, that affects H sub T. So there's a number of properties that can change your value of h sub t. Now, they have managed to model this relatively well. There's a lot of models out there that you can access um, and maybe even download. And you can input certain parameters for what you want into the model, and it'll spit some information out at you. So at the macro scale, you can model it pretty well. Okay? However, these models that work pretty well at the macro scale are often wrong at the nano scale. And the reason for that is uh, one of the things that they assume are some macro scale properties for fluid flow. In other words, the fluid is dense enough that motion through the fluid flow, if you have an object moving through the fluid, that it undergoes a lot of collisions, right, with the fluid itself. A lot of the atoms and molecules that make up the fluid collide with the object. And that's a very macro scale point of view. Shrink yourself down so that now you've got an object tiny enough that it's moving through a medium and the mean free path of the molecules of the medium that it's moving through are on the same order of size or maybe even larger than the object itself. That's the regime of the nanoscale particle, right? So that's why um, oftentimes these macro scale models that we have developed are wrong. 
And the regime that we find ourselves in for nanoscale particles is known as the rarefied gas model, which basically just means low density. But really, it's not necessarily low density. Um, it's just that the uh, particles look far apart if you're teeny weeny. So what um, we use to kind of describe this is the Knudsen number. Now you may have heard, if you've been a student of physics for a while, of the Reynolds number and some of the other numbers that are used to characterize fluid flow. And these can be used to calculate your heat transfer coefficient at the macro scale. But at the nano scale and in some other conditions as well, like rarefied gases and boundaries and things like that, you need to know your Knudsen number as well. Now the Knudsen number is the ratio of the mean free path of your particle to the characteristic, dim, uh, the mean free path of your fluid uh, particles to the characteristic dimension of your particle, D. So that Knudsen number Kn here is equal to lambda over D, where lambda is the mean free path, and D is the characteristic dimension of your nanoparticle. Now, if the Knudsen number is greater than 10, it's considered a rarefied gas, and if the Knudsen number is less than 0 0.01, then it's considered not rarefied. And then there's regimes in the middle where you have to kind of scratch your head and figure out what you're doing. So, remember, we're thinking about why this matters because we're picturing a nanoscale structure moving through the fluid. So, picture an astronaut taking um, a baseball and then throwing it in outer space, right? The, the, the ball in outer space doesn't really feel very much drag from the air around it. It's true that there are molecules in space. It's not completely a vacuum. There's, you know, hydrogen, helium, air, even moving around in outer space. It's just that the density is very, very low. And so the drag from the air in outer space is very low because the ball can go through and it doesn't collide with very many, many particles at all, right? So this is kind of what you would see if you were a nanoparticle, right? If you're, if you're tiny and you're moving through a fluid and the mean free path of the fluid particles is larger than you are, then you might not undergo very many collisions, and it's kind of similar to the baseball and outer space analogy, right? So to kind of hammer this home, I'd like to work a problem for you um, from your textbook. Uh, here it is, right? Nanotechnology, Understanding Small Systems. Here we have air molecules that have an effective diameter of 0.25 nanometers, okay? So, of course, this is a mix of oxygen and nitrogen primarily. Um, and they're at room temperature and pressure. So we're going to say that room temperature is about 293 Kelvin, and atmospheric pressure is at sea level, which is 101,000 pascals, roughly, right? So what's the Knudsen number of a particle that's 10 nanometers in diameter surrounded by air under these conditions, right? Because we definitely wouldn't think of room temperature and pressure as being a rarefied gas, right? <sighs> yeah, still okay, okay? <laughs> but for a nanoparticle, maybe it does look like outer space. So what's the nuts and number of this um, system? And is it similar or could we classify it as a rarefied gas? Okay, so here let's calculate our mean free path. We covered how to do this in a previous lecture. Um, but briefly, the mean free path lambda is equal to Boltzmann's constant, k sub b, times the temperature, divided by the square root of 2 times the pressure times pi d squared, um, where d is the diameter of your molecule. So plugging in, uh, Boltzmann's constant is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin, room temperature 293 Kelvin, divided by square root of 2 times 101 thousand pascals times pi times the diameter of our molecule 0.25 times 10 to the minus 9 meters squared. Plugging all this into my calculator, I found a mean free path of about 144 nanometers, which seems admittedly really small. But now let's calculate the Knudsen number and compare it to the characteristic dimension of our 10 nanometer in diameter nanoparticle. So, that nuts number would be lambda over D, which is 144 nanometers over 10, and that's 14.4, okay? So that's greater than 10. So yes, this would be in that rarefied gas regime for the nuts number. And so you can see that even while we might think that 
you know, for us, this isn't really a rarefied gas. To a nanoparticle, um, you still have to consider the Knudsen number. This is definitely not something that you can ignore. And this is why these macro scale models that we have for calculating our heat transfer coefficients um, often fail at the nanoscale. And so that means that, you know, we have to do a lot more work um, and do some more modeling and figure out how to model this on the nanoscale. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it made sense and I'll see you in class.